is a very fun video. You know, I was hoping my aerial was hammered for the but it's not. So yeah, and it's not coming tomorrow. Tomorrow is Sunday. We don't get mail. But this is a video that I'm not signing. We are doing assumptions about me that I came up with. I came up with all of these because I feel like these are things that you might want to know about me. The first assumption is, is, is that you wish you were, you wish you never turned 15. This one is kind of funny, which is why I incorporated it. But honestly, no, I'm actually happy that I turned 15. I chose this one for two reasons. First up, it was funny and like kind of random, but also second up, you might actually want to consider when it was around my 15th birthday. I complained a lot about my birthday coming and, and I want to clarify that. I complained about it for one reason, because birthday, like my birthday and my crush birthday and like holidays and it make me sad because I'm not with my crush and I miss him, like, for that reason. But honestly, I'm actually very, very happy that I turned 15 because, um, so here's something I want to tell you. Because, um, I think it was a little bit over a year ago or something. And I made a promise to Bella and now I might be able to keep it or actually do it next year, hopefully. Which my problem was that I would save up a bunch once I was able to drive, you know, which I'm getting my driver permit soon. We're going to try, you know, like, soon. Mm, but basically that once I had my driver fund, that I would save up a bunch of money mm, to take her to a JoJo concert and like buy merch and like do the meet and greet and all of that and make it a fabulous night and just spend a fabulous day with her and now I might be able to actually hold that up but we will see so in a way I am very very happy that I turned 15 it was just hard because 15 is a big birthday and here's the truth people like this was something true that uh at first, my dad did kind of question it, but um, so at one point, he, I think he went, uh, well, now that you're 15, there's such a big age difference between you and your crush, and I'm like, if you say that I can't be with him, I'm not going to be happy with you, and he went, no, you, like, you love him too much, I would never do that to you, yeah, but, like, it's really not that big of an age difference. It's like, what, it's maybe three, of, like a two year age difference, possibly three. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's two, because he'll be turning 13, I'm pretty sure, this year, so yeah. <laughs> so it's not, like, my rule is that because my dad asked me, like, Eight different opinions and stuff. Um, um, and I went like, honestly, I think if it's within four years, and he went like, went like, four years is a little extreme, and I'm like, I, no, my, well, in, in here, if it's more than four years, if it's more than four years, wait until you're both had a decent, like, age of, like, uh, you're both like past 15, I'm, I'm going to say like past 15 or something. And you know, because then people's opinions don't really matter. Or, and at that point, you're both past a good like, age. And but luckily, only, I went like, the reason I say four, because it's kind of like weird reason, mm, is because I said that. And obviously I went, I said I obviously would choose more than two because I went like, because it let me be with my crush and like all 
have that for like a good like amount like so now the next assumption that I chose is you wish you never had autism. That is one that I feel like is the biggest, like a bigger one. And the truth is actually no. I would, I'm saying I actually love having autism. Like, you know, like that's something that people all question me about. Literally my dad even did that one. He went like, you like, mind when I, like, tell people that you have my, like, autism is great, you know, like, it's great because if it weren't for autism, I would have never gone to the autism center, which meant I would have never gone to music class there, which meant that I would have never met my crush, which is my favorite person on earth. So, in a way, also, I don't have a very bad case. My crush, now, he has a more worse case, but still, it's cool. Like, we met each other because of autism, so I very much love it. And if I didn't have it, honestly, I would be really upset. <laughs> I know it. So, yeah. The next assumption, so the next assumption is that you can't wait to start driving. This one is true 100% because it's going to be great like once I have my driver's license because then basically at this point it means that I can go and see Bella like sometimes like I can drive up there and like see Bella like that's great and when she comes down for like the summer or like I usually when she comes down for the summer or we take money, like, I'll have, like, my allowance or something, and I'll, like, split it with her, not this year, because I'm saving up for merch, and then a floor, but, like, you know, like, we'll, like, go out and spend money, but we always have to, like, wait a day, or, like, wait a few days, you know, because for someone to drive us, you know, since, I'm 15, like, I'm about to get my drive permit, hopefully. Bella's 8, almost 9, you know. And with that, like, so once I have my license, it will be great, because then I can go do things, you know, like, I can take Bella to the store, like, we can see each other a lot more, like, it can be fun. So, the next assumption and the reason that I titled the Q&A instead of assumption is because I don't know how to spell assumptions and I didn't want to spell a bad word or something, you know. So Q&A was the close thing that I could spell to assumption that, like, you would understand. So the next assumption is that you argue with your mom and you hate her. This one is a big no. Actually, I love my mom. I do argue with her. I'll admit that. Like, I definitely argue with my mom sometimes. Because my mom, sometimes she can be strict. She can be really strict. Interesting fact. When I was 11, and all I wanted to do, well, there was this one thing that I would do. So, I lived with my sister at me. And there were, like, a bunch of neighborhood kids. And Bella's sister always got to, like, go to their house and, and play and stuff. And I never got to meet them, kind of, because my mom wouldn't let me, you know, like, that sort of thing. Until finally one day, I think I was almost 12. Like, I was wondering, like, I, I think it was around my 12th birthday. And, you know, a little bit after or something. And... And she, her excuse every time, you're too young to be going to people's houses. And, and it wasn't like, oh, it was far away. It was literally like two or three houses down. Like, not a big deal. And so finally one day I went upstairs. And I went like, can I go please? And then she's like, fine, you can go. And the funny thing was, it got funny and then it got sad. So the funny thing was that we went to 
one person's house. We knew, like, the kids and stuff, we played with them. Like, you know me. And my dad was gone, so he didn't know that, like, like, she was letting me. He was always fine with it. But then, basically, what happened was my dad drove right past us and didn't even see because he wasn't really, like, he was focusing on driving and, and didn't see. And then he, then I, wait, is there a car? Yeah. Okay. There wasn't a car. Let me sit back down. But yeah. So the fun thing was, I'm fat. I get home and he's like, where did you go? Or like, he, no, I get home and I'm like, I, Mom let me go, finally, and he's like, great, I got played where, you know, and she was like, that's cool, because she was so strict about that. Then, but the sad part about it was that the one day that I finally got to go, most people weren't home. <laughs> so, yeah, that was it. But yeah, my mom can be strict, but at the same time, I'm very thankful because there's a lot that she's led me. Like, if it weren't for her, I would have never gotten Sam, and Sam wanted the greatest thing to happen to me. You, you take a nap, Sam. Oh, I just I kiss you. Like, if it weren't for my mom, I never met my crush. Because she was the one that said, and we should put her in music class and art class. And that led me to my crush. Like, there's so many great things that my mom has done. So, although we argue, you know, a lot, <laughs> at the end of the day, I love her because there's a lot of great things. The next assumption is kind of similar, but it is you hate your dad and you argue with him. Honestly, no. This one's a... Like, you know, me and my dad seemed to get along pretty good. Because when I was little, I argued with him more. But it was always over one thing um, that I wanted to sleep in my parents' bedroom with them. Like, yeah, like, so. Yeah, like, but me and my dad kind of think alike, so. There's some stuff that I'm like, we're very opposite. Like, I, all he want, like, he want me to learn how to play an instrument or something, and I'm like, nah. He's like, well, how do you expect to sing? And, and, and if you're not gonna play an instrument, that's just gonna be boring. And I'm, maybe if you let me work on my talent, and, and when I get better at it, maybe I'll prove you wrong, like that. And there's things like that. The fact that he likes the movie Trolls. <clears throat> like, there was so much stuff. Like, there's just things about us that, like, I'm like, no, how does he live like this? The fact that he likes this movie called Artemis that I can't stand. Yeah. Like, there's things about us that are different, but we never argue over actual things anymore. Like, and occasionally we'll be in the car and he'll be like, I, you need to just listen to your mom. Um, like, just listen to your mom, just go along with it. And that one thing that drives me mad is that so many times I have seen people just kind of give in to her and just do what she wants and then turn around in the car or something and we'll be talking and then they'll be like, that's silly that she won't let me do this or something. And, but we love my mom, like, so much. But, yeah. Uh, and it mainly with my dad. 
him the point one time. One time he paid me and because this one week she was being extremely difficult with me, like extremely over the top difficult. <laughs> and so he made a joke the day before because he was leaving that day. And I think trying to remember what it was. I think it was that he was going to see his brother or something, which ended up being one of the last times. But uh, he made a joke the day before, and he went like, I, oh, and you stay, I'll, like, pay you, because she was being difficult on me, like, really, really difficult. I don't know that I know how difficult it was to be the next day. But then one good thing came out in the next day. Which was that my mom ordered some Domino's and had it delivered. Very expensive, by the way. She paid forty dollars for like two large pizzas, one with double ham, double cheese, and one that just a cheese. And then the like knot thing, garlic knot thing, for her. Yeah, and it was very expensive, so yeah. It was interesting. Interesting, like there's difference. But then the next day, it, he left, and like you know, it was fine. Like the day was like very annoying, and and then he gets home, and like I, me and him were in the bedroom, like I, cause I was just playing around with Sam, and. He straight up gave me like eight dollars, and I was like, "Well, that made today worth it all." Like, for simplified eight dollars, and I ordered a Jojo leotard that night. <laughs> so the next assumption, and is, but me and my dad get along great. Like we think alike. I and later. Wintering times when, like, I, we just think alike and we learn alike, if that makes sense. Because there's times when my mom will, like, try to teach me something in school. And, and, I'll, and she'll, like, go on and make it so complicated. Like, literally so complicated. And and then, and then I'll be lost and she's like, I, I can't believe you can't get something this easy. <laughs> and like, then my dad will come in and then like, forget everything that she told you. Mm, this is how we do it. And then actually the, in a much less complicated way. And within 10 minutes I have it. Because my mom, she learns in complicated ways. Like to her, she picks up, to her, something easy doesn't make sense. She has to go complicated for it to make sense to her. And when my dad and me is the opposite, we need something easy to explain and understand. So yeah, the next assumption is, and, and so the next assumption is that you want to find your crush before 2020 is over or before your six first day. I'm doing, this is a big yes, a hundred percent yes. Because like my 16th birthday is like a big deal. Versus like it just, I really want to find him like so bad. The next assumption, the next assumption is that people didn't like you at music class and you, that was part of why you wanted to quit at one point. 
So there was a point at music where I wanted to quit. And the only thing keeping me there, literally, and this is true, you can live, well, if my dad was here, you could ask him, but you can't really talk through the case, through the tablet and stuff, like, this is a video, so, like, I guess you can ask my dad, but, like, you can DM me on Instagram, and I'll have him reply, uh, if you want the answer, but I'm going to tell you, which is, is that at one point in music class, I wanted to quit. It started getting really, really boring, and it got to the point where when the day, like, when Wednesday would come, because music class was on Wednesday for an hour, and it was from, like, three, well, it was from, from, like, 3.45-ish to 5.00. So like about an hour, or but we would get there around 3.30, you know, like, it gave me more time with my crush, because, like, me and him were the teacher's pets, 100%. We would get there early, we would help set up, we would listen to the teacher, like, I, in, there's a teacher's pet in music class, it was me and my crush. Yeah, so, like, you know, like. Interesting fact. Uh, so yeah, and basically at one point, like it started getting boring. If that makes sense, like it started get to where we were doing the same old things. We like the themes would always change, and the themes would always change, which was good, and because like if you do the same theme every week, it kind of just gets boring. But like, I but the activities wouldn't really change and like all of this stuff. Like <laughs> and like it was a thing and it started getting to it where I'm kind of finding like things at home to do which because I was kind of younger and like I I didn't get bored as easy because I could find pretty much anything I loved. I'm doing crafts and stuff and I had a lot of them to do. So I was kind of just getting to the point where I could do things at home and have fun. But then the only thing that kept me there when uh, the first week that it started or the Cause this went on for like, I want to say like over two months where I was debating. So I brought it up to my dad and I went like, but I don't know. And he's like, this is your decision, you know, and you want to quit. We'll tell the teacher we'll quit, you know, like, cause we want to be fair and like tell the teacher, you know. Oh, and, but if you don't want to, we'll keep going. Like, and. I couldn't think about it. I couldn't make the decision. And he went like, well, what are the reasons you want to quit? And I'm like, because it's getting to where we're doing the same old stuff. Um, it's getting kind of boring, but also like, it's getting to the point where, where like, we kept doing like karaoke and, th and, and then I kept getting like terrified and like, of different, like, groups, and, like, that was happening a lot, where, like, I, she would pull out the karaoke machine, come up, and, you, like, do you want to sing, like, like, go, and I'm, like, and, like, I, then my crush would come up, and you, like, no, you should do it, you're really good at it, and, like, pet, hug me, and then, like, I would be terrified because of people that, like, I'm not the most comfortable with. Like, it was getting to be a wreck. And so, then he went, like, well, what are the reasons you want to stay? And I'm like, like, the funny thing is there's only one. And he went, like, what is the one? And I went, like, if I leave, I'm not going to see my crush. I'm like, the only thing keeping me there is seeing my crush every week. And... I couldn't go through losing him, 
Well, did I know? Um, well, did I know that 2019 was going to hit? And by the end of it, I would never, that I was going to lose my crush by the summer of 2019. And then, basically, my world was going to fall apart. And I was never going to be happy for, like, over a year. And, like, almost two years. And patiently waiting to find my crush again. <laughs> to me, 2019 was, was a bigger bust than 2020. My life kind of got destroyed in 2019. Because in 2019, mm, so much happened really. Like, we moved, um, like, we had moved, I was getting over, like, I was healing from being bullied and, like, hated on, like, for no reason. And stuff, like, a lot was happening. And then, but luckily, within, like, a few days, I was back good to go. I started social media, and, and there were a lot of good, but for me, like, at least for 2019, and it was bigger letdown because I lost my crush. And although 2020 was horrible, because it kept me from seeing my crush at the same time. And he went like, well, you need to make the decision, stay or go. So I thought about for weeks. And then I came to music class one day, and my crush was there, and I was went like, well, I, in my head, I'm freaking out, I'm like, I, I, I just want to leave right now, but I don't, because if I leave, I'm not going to see him anymore, and that I could never do. And so, I kind of just thought about for, like, over two months, and then, and I, no, two weeks passed, and then, and I, then came a situation that made it, the decision worse, which was that a guy started. So essentially, what happened is we would always have new assistants, you know, people from college trying to like learn, learn how to be a music class teacher, and they would come be an assistant and like help out with the music class teacher, although she never needed help because. No, she did, but, like, the music class, personally, she didn't need help, considering she had two helpers as it was, me and my crush. But, you know, like, there's can they'll see me. And then, basically, at this point, when we show up to music class, and I'm like, Dad, look, there's a guy, and he's like, um, I'm like, we're leaving right now. And that tore me apart. Like, just saying we're leaving right now. Because this guy, I did not feel comfortable with. I never met him at that point. And if I'm not comfortable with you, I'm going to, like, kind of go back in my shell of being shy and, you know, you know. I'm like, and something, like, something was just telling me you're, you're, you can't go in there, like, I, that so was hard, because later, we were, I was putting my seatbelt back on, and my crush walks in, and he's like, do you want to go in, what if I go in, and just ask him, like, at playing the situation, and See if your crush will, like, kind of go in there with you, you know, like, and, you know, and I'm like, at this point, I'm like, nope, I'm not because I didn't say that was good, it was because I was not going to let my dad embarrass me in front of my crush. Um, <laughs> basically then, okay, so we left, we went home, my mom's like, when are you doing home so early? Like, you've been gone for, like, not that long. And we're like, there's a guy. And at this point, we thought maybe the theme will, like, bring your, like, bring a family member to work or something. Like, I didn't know. Or to music class. That, like, I didn't know it looked that way. 
And then the next week came. Um, this is a funny story. Basically, the next week came, and, and we pull up, and I'm like, the guy is still there. So at this point, we're confused, not knowing who this guy is, why is he there. So my dad walks in, and, you know, he walks in, and then like, I first up, um, um, the music class teacher wasn't there that week. And two other people that I'm very comfortable with were doing it, and the guy was assisting me. Walks in and comes out, and is like, here's the deal. And I'm like, oh, no, and my dad says that is not good. Whatever comes next is something I'm not going to like. He's like, so the guy's a new assistant, and, and that um, he said two people, I don't think they want their name out. I don't know. Um... But I knew these people really, but like they're running music class and that, uh, um, one of them said that you, if you came in, they would like kind of be with you and I'm like, we're leaving, we're leaving right now. Uh, and at this point, something else happened. And because before he came out, before my dad came out, and now I thought music class wasn't happening because my crush walks out. And he was not looking good, like, I know, like, you could tell something was up. And, and I'm like, well, then why is my crush leaving? He's like, oh, yeah, he's, he's sick, like, really sick. And I told him and hope that he gets well. And I'm like, and you didn't call me in. Like, at this point, I'm mad. I'm annoyed. Or and I'm like, let's just go home, like, because I'm like, at least you should have told him, like, I, wait one second, I think while we want to, like, talk to you real quick. Like, <laughs> we left, and basically that was kind of a continuous thing about, like, the guy being for weeks until finally my dad went in and talked with the teacher. Or, and at this point, the teacher didn't know that I wanted to quit, like, or anything. Anything rocks. So she comes out and is like, I, well, I, I, you know, like, you should come on in, you know, come join us, you know, like, I, if I'm like, you don't have to interact with this guy, I like, and then I'm like, at first thinking about for like a second, I'm like, you know what, uh, I lost too many weeks without my crush, might as well. So I walked, went in, and then all of a sudden my crush walked. Much the teacher goes up to him and is like, I, this is Lolly, and she's a little uncomfortable around certain people. Um, but once she gets used to me, she will be cool. And I'm like, I, I think I should leave, I think I should leave. And then my crush comes in and, and pretty much kind of found out. And literally that entire day, I'm actually happy I went in. And at the moment, I was like, no, I won't leave. Like, why am I doing this? And in my head, I was telling my, that's what I was saying in my, but I also went like, you're doing this for your crush. You're doing this so you can see him, you know, freaking out. Well, basically then. To end the story, kind of. Um, so my crush somehow, like, basically just wanted to be partnered with me that day, ended up being the greatest day of one of the greatest. Because I ended up, like, dancing with my crush, and, like, I. And it felt good. And that was the moment that. Here's a fun fact I cannot look people in the eye. None. Something about me, if you ever see me looking at you directly in the eye, like direct eye contact, uh, you're the luckiest person on earth. Because it has only happened once. Or with one person, I mean. So basically, I was freaked out. And at this point, um, this is kind of like a moment that hit me like, 
you really, mm, this is where you're supposed to be with your crush. Because we were dancing and I looked directly in the eye, like, we were talking, we were, like, having fun, and, like, it was amazing. <laughs> and, like, you know, eventually everyone, at, or a lot of people at music class found out about what was going on, and, yeah, and then that moment I went, like, well, I made my decision. I can't leave. I just can't leave him. Like, now if I could go back in that moment and, and, and tell him I had a crush on him, maybe we wouldn't be in this horrible nightmare situation that we are in now. But yeah, there was a lot. Oh, I want to tell you the car story because real quick because that's a good one and I haven't really explained full story on camera. So there was a car story. So basically we get to music class and there's no sign of the teacher. Turns out she was on like a vacation. My dad walks in or comes out and is like, here's the deal. And I'm like, oh no, like this is not going to be good. What came after it was worse than I expected. Basically what happened was, was that, basically what happened was that, uh, he comes out and says, well, here's the deal, you know, um, music class is happening. And I'm like, well, that's good. I'm like, okay, what's about to come next? And then my dad's like, but the guy is doing it. And I'm like, I'm worst news of my life. Or at the time it was. Worst news of my life was finding out that music class was done for. Yeah. <laughs> and then basically, basically, then to make it worse, I'm, I, I'm about to say, like, let's just leave then. Then, in my crush box in, and we're like, we're still in our car, my crush was walking in, and he like, like, if you want, you can go and meet your crush, and I'm like, usually that sort of thing would bribe me, and like, I would actually say yes, but I'm like, no, I can't do it, like, like, I will throw up if I do it, like, I was traumatized, and I waited in the car, like, basically 45 minutes in the car are then and like practically crying at this point because part of me went like he, like i part of me wanted to go in because to see my crush you know and like that situation and but then part of me said no you're too scared you're not gonna do it because first up it was as the guy there, but also there was another assistant that me and her never felt <laughs> were comfortable. Like, I was never comfortable with her because we were very different personalities and I never really got to know her 100%. So, yeah, I couldn't say much. And then, basically, I get home and mom's like, Oh, you're home like 15 minutes early, and my dad explained what was going on, and then my mom was like, you wasted so much gas, I start screaming at me, and like, and now I'm sure, like, I'm, so you basically wasted gas money, and great, and my dad, like, you should have seen her face, she wasn't doing this on purpose, and my mom, like, who cares, and uh, I'm, no, and I screamed at my mom. I literally laughed out. I screamed at my mom. Um, and he was directly screamed at her. And I went like, you don't know why you went there. And, uh, and she was like, I, I, oh, you're fine. I, you should have just gone in or just left. And I'm like, I, you don't know that decision was tearing me down. Um, I was in the car practically crying. 
because I couldn't take it anymore. And like, I just started screaming at her about how hard, because it was hard. Like, it seems easy, but when you love someone so much, but then there's something that telling you that you're too scared of something, it can be really hard. And like, at this point, it was a wreck. And, and I literally went in my room, and then my mom apologized to me. Like I, like, I still think you were being dumb, but, like, but, like, I'm sorry, I mean, I shouldn't have made you scream at me, like, and things got fixed. Luckily, that was, like, the last week with the guy, so that was good. It was good, and it, like, gave me that happiness again. Yeah, and then, basically, then at that point, um, then right as that finally, like, all ended, it, I got some news, which was that we were gonna be moving. We kind of, like, we kind, we already knew, like, kind of up to the point, that we were going to be moving with my sister, but this was when it was like we found, we started really looking at houses, and that this was going to be happening within a couple of months, and that tore me down, because I went like, I can't tell my crush, like if I tell him, I'm going to end up hurting myself, and if I don't tell him, I'm going to end up hurting myself, both not very good options. Luckily, only I did not end up hurting myself. Oh, but it was very, very good. It got close to that, but it didn't. But yeah, and then I came back and it was a He came back to tell my crush. And I practically, like, because I could only stay for, like, a little bit. Because we had like a three hour drive, we were already pretty much moved at this point. We were going to be coming back like two or three times a year. And I, and when my dad called me and went, no, he walked in the room and said, and we have to go now. And my crush wasn't there and I didn't want to leave. I, at this point, was crying almost. So yeah. On to the next, the final few assumptions. And so the next assumption is you love to dance and you love your career and you want to make it even farther. This one is a big yes, a hundred percent yes. The next assumption is your favorite memories of your life are with your crush, your top six. I'm going to tell you my top six actually. Interesting fact, all of them involve my crush except for, like, I, two. Yeah. So, like, four of them involve my crush, two of them know, which is the JoJo concert, because that was amazing. And I stayed up till midnight, like, till actually 12.30, because that's when we got home. Yeah, because it was a little bit of a drive. And then, second... So that was a really fun one. We got there, we like, me and my sister had a fun sister day. And also it was my first ever concert and my last concert. It's the last one that I've been to and my first ever one. And it was literally more than a dream come true. Like at that point, I was crying. And the entire thing. And, and no one noticed. Not even my own sister sitting next to me. Well, in fairness, I was standing, dancing, having fun. <laughs> and the other memory, this one is kind of a happy sad, which is the day that I screamed at Bella. I don't scream at Bella. I am very well done. We're really, like, we're really great friends with I mean. And so if we get mad, we'll talk about, but we won't scream at each other. But then one day, I screamed at her, and I screamed at her good. Because, no, what happened? 
and here's the story real quick. Basically, basically, I hadn't seen my crush in a while. And the last two times I had went to music class, as he was out sick, and it was really worrying me. Like, I'm the type that, and my crush has a cold. I'm freaking out thinking that planet Earth is going to uh, all end. Like, you know that I'm freaking out thinking Earth is done, like, everything's done. Then, and we basically went to music class. Or we were going to, and I was really excited. Like Bella was gonna meet my crush, like, and because she knew everything about him pretty much at this point. And and basically, what happened was the day got really bad. And so then basically we get there, and it's a rainy day. Like, I we had left Walmart. Like we we got a few things. I. Got like some JoJo 3D stickers, or some JoJo napkin paper plates, and this like JoJo squishy necklace, <coughs> and stuff. And Bella got like a really cool like notebook, and like I she got a notebook, I think like maybe a pen or something, and then she got um um a keychain. That was really pretty. You know, and basically then, and so we show up to music class, not a lot of cars were there, and start saying, oh, we are a little bit early, you know, sometimes, like, we wait a little bit, because sometimes we get there before the teacher, like, that's the type of people we are. Uh, and then my speech therapist walks out. Because I used to have a speech therapist. My crush saw her. I think he still does. I don't know. And basically, it's like, what are you guys doing here? And she went like, oh, wait, music class. And I went like, yeah. And she went like, I, um, I don't think they're doing it this week. And so she went and talked to someone about because someone that knows more about it. And it comes out and it's like, yeah, they're not funding it this week. The check never came to fund it this week. I took it as music class was done for. Bella also did. We get in the car and then, like, basically at this point, we stopped at, like, a gas station or something. And then I'm upset. Like, I'm straight up upset. And I'm sad. Like, I lost my crush. And then my dad went to get gas in the car, you know, like right outside. And Belle was like, I'm sorry. And, and I start screaming at her. I'm like, you don't understand. And I just lost my car. I start screaming at her. And then she's like, I'm sorry, lovely light. And then my dad opens the car and is like, okay, what do you girls want? Like, you know, like, I, I'm going in. And what sort of snack he want? And so he told her, you know, he went and got the snacks, came out. Well, as he was in there, there I was screaming at Bella, and and at this point, like, like things just got silent. <laughs> and then, and my dad gets in, and I'm like, it's sad that music class is done for him. Like, what are you talking about? And and he. <laughs> Like, music class isn't done for. Or they just, the check didn't come in to fund it this one week. So we get home, we get upstairs, and then, and at this point, I had a feeling that, like, like, that it was done for. So I was still upset. You know what? Like, I had a feeling. My feeling was right. And we get home and we explain what happened to my, when, to my mom, and she's like, oh, that's sad. Then, you get into my bedroom, and I'm like, Bella, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to scream at you, and she's like, I am starting to apologize. She's like, I don't blame you. You were upset over something. You lost a big part of your earth. Like, you lost your crush, and I don't blame you. And I'm, like, she was so nice about it, because she understood. 
So it was definitely like my sixth favorite memory because it was happy and sad that she understood. So I'm going to end this here with one more assumption, which is the final assumption, and is that uh, you dream about making it big on social media and you are willing to follow your dreams no matter where they take you with or without Bell. Uh, and this one is honestly true and false. Like, yes and no. Because I definitely do whatever it takes to follow my dream. And if something came up and Belle and me couldn't be friends anymore, like, if I had to, like, if Belle said, oh, you have to pick me or social media and following your dream because I don't want you doing social media. I would definitely pick social media, but if it, like, if something were to happen and I had no choice but to let go of that, I think I would. It depends on the case. So, yeah.